Gosh, it feels like we hardly even... Oh. Gosh, it feels like we hardly even got to any news last week. It's like faux television is a really lousy way to convey information. <laughs> No, there's no time. There is too much racing. We are literally months away from the beginning of the regular season and already we've had overlapping events. Wasn't somebody gonna work on that? Anyway, it's been a really bad month to be a World Tour sprinter. If you saw the tour down under how the race was won, and I know you did because no one watches just the week in bike, you'll recall that zero sprints were won by riders from top tour teams, a cohort that includes some guy named Markel Keitel, who'd probably be faster if he did something about that hair. At the Tour de San Luis, Mark Cavendish had his wheels solidly blown off by the Colombian national team's Fernando Gaviria, and in fact, Cav probably owes his one victory to a superior leadout rather than superior speed. The performance earned the 20-year-old instant inquiries from World Tour teams, and for good reason. Gaviria showed tremendous potential, both in terms of being able to lay down a huge amount of power in a short period of time, and to sustain a high-end speed for distances approaching 300 meters. Continuing with the theme of results you might not have expected, the San Luis overall was won by Daniel Diaz of Funvic São José dos Campos. Hot take! Can Nairo Quintana's season be saved? Yeah, I mean, the guy is training to go fast in France in July, but we should totally expect him to be competitive against guys who are training to go fast in Argentina in January. Especially when we're in Argentina. And it's January. To the women's tour down under, which was won by Orica AIS's Valentina Scandalara on the back of a first day breakaway. The success of this escape was no doubt assisted by the presence of teammate and sprinter Melissa Hoskins back in the group, who, by the way, went on to win stages two and four. Scandalara showed a lot of promise last season, and with a deeper team behind her, she could be on track for a very big 2015. But at the other end of the season arc, the women's cyclocross picture is about as clear as the mud at last weekend's World Cup finale in Hoverheide. Colnago Suterol's Eva Lechner, wait, who? Dominated the event? Trex Katie Compton struggled mightily, finishing 21st and losing her second place overall to Telnet Fidea's Ellen Van Looy. An injured Mariana Vos of Rabobank was only 12th. And because something bad had to happen to her too, World Cup leader Sana Kant of Enertherm BKCP crashed into this stupid legged barrier fence, which is still, I guess, somehow okay to use in Europe. Kant would rally to finish fourth and secure the World Cup title overall, but seriously, aren't these people racing for a world championship in, like, tomorrow? I'd hate to have to be placing bets on that one. <coughs> for on Prevost. Men's Cross brings its own drama to Worlds too, just the old-fashioned way. With drugs! Or, I guess, Ozone in the case of Tom Mayusen. Also, why is there a UCI rule special to world championships? It's not better or worse to be under investigation for doping depending on what race you're doing. Either suspend the rider or don't. Anyway, JK, because the Belgian Court of Arbitration for Sport ruled in Mayusen's favor, so he'll be racing at Worlds. But the Telnet Fidea rider didn't have a particularly strong World Cup finale, finishing only 18th. Season absentee Sven Nace of Craylon AA Drink had a reasonable finish in 6th to make a Belgian team selection, and Sunweb Napoleon Games' Kevin Powell's finished 4th to win the World Cup overall. But really, what is that distinction worth when the duo of BKCP Power Plus's Matthew Vanderpool and Foss Good Service Golden Palace's Wout Van Aert, who finished 1st and 2nd respectively at Hoer Heidje, haven't been racing against you all season? Fortunately, they'll both be doing the elite race at Worlds, because they are. I could smear my face with the usual sticky bun of trying to find U.S. cyclocross coverage, but suffice to say, if you're watching in this country, it'll come on early, and you'll want lots of... Yes, today's t-shirt sponsor is the Carytown Bicycle Company of Richmond, Virginia, which in addition to having an in-house state-of-the-art bicycle repair facility, also offers a variety of bottles, jerseys, shirts, caps, and even their own roast of... on their website. Carrytown Bicycle Company. They're owned by cyclists, they're staffed by cyclists, and they exist for cyclists. All of them. In the latest and kind of most interesting attempt to get the big GC names into the classics, the Tour de France has announced that three cobbled sectors from stage 7 of this year's race will also feature in Paris-Roubaix. The sectors are humanely early in the event, the first coming just 100k in, but I still question whether a rider can be cobbles fast in April and still get fit to win the Tour up calls in July. Speaking of not winning the Tour de France, Lance Armstrong recently- Ah, would you look at that? We're out of time. I'm Cosmo Catalano, and that was The Week in Bike. <laughs>